I want to focus today's video on fragrances that just make me happy when I walk by, look at the bottle and want to sniff them. And there's some memory that comes up or some reason that I have to just have a heart full of joy when I look at these various fragrances. And I'm not going to delay. We're going to get right to it. The first one reminds me of the goodness that still exists in a world when it might seem crazy and there's war, there's famine, there's homelessness, there's drug abuse, there are kids getting abused in the world. You know, all of the crazy things that kind of keep you up at night or that make you just wonder and fear for humanity. And then someone comes along and does something really thoughtful and kind and nice for you. And you like, you know, there's still really fantastic, wonderful, warm, good humans in the world. So I want to give a shout out to a viewer named Karen, who sent me one of the bottles of her most treasured fragrance that she loves the most. And this is called Endlessly from the, the store, Maurice's. I looked and looked for this. It's not on Fragrantica or anything. However, friends, this is available on the Maurice's website. And y'all are not gonna, not gonna believe this. It's a whole $17.43, shut the front door. So a huge thank you to Karen for her thoughtfulness. I got the notification from the UPS store that a package had arrived, had no idea what it was, went, and this was in there along with a very lovely handwritten note about how she enjoys the channel and wanted me to enjoy this fragrance along with her. And I'm like, I was so touched. I was nearly moved to tears when I open this up. So the description is fresh cut lilacs and white freesia on top of a rich vanilla cream. And I get all of that in here. This is just a delightful floral vanilla that is a super easy wear, would probably layer great with fragrances, would be fantastic for day to day, a soft, demure, delicate feminine fragrance, easy to sleep in also, all of that. This could be like, you know, your hanging out in your cozy pajamas at home fragrance as much as it could be a date night fragrance where you want it to smell delicate and feminine and sweet and creamy without being overpowering and having the fragrance speak on your behalf. This is really, really nice. And I love that when I look at this, I think about Karen and the sweet intention with which she sent this. So I want to say thank you to Karen for sharing one of your gems with me. I treasure this and it makes me very, very happy to look at this and to spray it on. I want to go next to a fragrance that was pure love at first sniff. Take a look at my new beauties video where I describe this in greater depth. And I love the bottle. The color of it makes me happy. The fragrance inside is just delightfully amazing. This is Herba Gold from Zerzhov. Friends, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. That's Fire Marshal Bill, in case y'all don't know the reference and why I do that. <laughs> in living color, if you're an 80s kid, you know. If you know, you know. Let me tell you something. Okay, stop it, Veronica. This fragrance is supremely fruity in all of the sweet, delicious, melony ways. If you think about Herba Pura from Zerzhov, if you tried that fragrance or any of its clones, you know that it is accused of being almost like synthetic, way too musky, overpowering, bombastic, like nauseating to some. I think it's beautiful, but some people think that it is nauseating. I don't think that those people that hate that fragrance would dislike this one maybe as much. I mean, if you don't like fruit and you don't like musk, you're not gonna like this either. But the muskiness in here is very soft and smooth and elevated. Did I say smooth with a D? I did say that smooth. It's like it's smoothed out maybe and elevated in a way that um, I think would appeal to a wide variety of people. I also think there's a nice healthy dose of vanilla in the fragrance to add almost like this creamy sweetness on the bottom. And I don't mean sweet in like a gourmand fashion. I mean sweet, like think creamy sweet. Is that a thing? sweet, creamy. <laughs> it works here. It works. Yes, there's musk. Yes, there's heaping doses of fruitiness. There are some ni nice citrus notes that play alongside of the fruit notes. And the fruit notes, like I said, are in the melon direction. I think of like cantaloupe and honeydew and maybe even passion fruit. There's something a little bit sort of tart and deep and super sweet like you would get with a passion fruit note. This is really, really delightful and super long lasting and projecting. And like I said, when I sniffed this, I immediately was like, wow, that is absolutely fantastic. This almost made it into my latest masterpiece uh, video. However, <laughs> I wanted to wear it more before I officially declared that because it is newer to the collection. And, you know, we go kind of crazy over the, the new, new stuff. So I think I do want to say about this fragrance that it leans more feminine again, you know, 
I wear masculine fragrances and I know men that wear feminine fragrances. So that's not a thing, but I do think there is a feminine and masculine end of the fragrance spectrum. And this is more on the feminine end and it's beautiful. So good. So good. So almost like addictive. Maybe that's what this video should have been called addictive fragrances. But y'all, if you haven't tried this and you like a fruity, musky, vanilla combo, boom, here you go. I received this next fragrance probably maybe a couple of months ago at this point and continue to play with it and enjoy it and especially its uniqueness. It's very, very different than much of what I have in my collection, although there are aspects of it that remind me of other fragrances. So this is called Queen of the Sea and this is from New Notes and I did a New Notes video and got a chance to test this out and it's one of my top picks from the line because of its uniqueness. So it's mostly seawater is one of the primary notes or like this marine accord and it's a fresh type of seawater it reminds me a little bit that part of it of replica sailing day from maison margella if you're familiar with that sort of fresh sea air type of smell that would be smacking you in the face if you were on a high speed boat out on the water it has a little bit of like a mineral saltiness to it also and then mostly it is light and bright florals, a rose note and some other white florals, but very bright and light, like you would get off of a fresh bouquet that had just started to blossom, if you will, along with some citrus notes and some tart citrus notes. Like think about uh, lemon and bergamot. This is so delightful. It reminds me, the reason that I'm uh, slightly obsessed with this at this point is it reminds me kind of sorta of a fragrance that I cannot find anywhere unless there's like price gouging. And I'm not paying people for, 4,000 times the <laughs> original retail cost for something just because it's discontinued. Oh my gosh, that sort of price gouging is just outrageous. Anyway, it reminds me of Victoria's Secret Body, which I wore the heck out of <laughs> back in the day. It has aspects of that as well as aspects maybe of like Heavenly, if you remember that fragrance, and some of those marine sea air types of notes and a little citrus. Really hard to describe, but very, very fun. And I love the name, Queen of the Sea. I love this next fragrance because of the surprise factor. When I saw it advertised, I was like, oh, what's happening with that color scheme? I don't know that I'm gonna like that. Why would they do that to my beloved Disney? Hint, hint, hint. It is <laughs> Disney, what are you called? Disney 100, Minnie Mouse, I think, from House of Sillage. By the way, everything that I'm talking about, I will link below the shopping links if you're interested in them. Yes, it's called Disney 100, as you see on the back, and House of Siage on the front, Disney X House of Siage. And this top, part of what I love about it is the surprise of realizing that the top is in honor of Epcot Center, the icon for Epcot Center, the big ball that has the ride in it. When you first come into the park, it is sort of the anchor ride of the park, the big ball, the golf ball looking thing. And I love that. I have great memories of going to Disney as a child. I've been many, many times and I'm gonna go again here soon and really, really enjoy myself. I look forward to it. It just brings me joy to think about Disney. The other thing that I love about this fragrance is it looks so much cuter in person than it did online. So House of Siach was having that half off sale and you know your girl was like, okay, let me, let me give this a go. And when it arrived, I was like, wow, this is so much cuter than it looks online. And here's the part that surprised me even more than all of that, the smell. So on looking at the notes, I would not think that this would be a fragrance that would captivate me because it sounds like it would be a really sort of cool, distant type of fragrance. This is like a tangy blueberry apple fragrance that is, yes, it's on the cold side, like cold and clean, but what a fun fragrance. It reminds me of the blueberry and blueberry shortcake, blueberry shortcake. <laughs> it reminds me of the blueberry and strawberry shortcake. It reminds me of Britney Spears' Midnight Fantasy, like that smell, that fragrance is so, so good. One of the best celebrity fragrances ever. It's like a clean shampoo-y herbal essence with blueberry and apple and maybe a little sweetness in the background from like something like a caramel note. I don't know, I have the, don't have the notes in front of me at the moment, but the blueberry piece stands out to me and I really enjoy it and it's different. It's different, it's light and bright. If you think about sometimes wanting Bath and Body Works scents, the ones that you love the most to show up in perfume form, here you go. This gives you some of that youthful feeling that some of those fruity fragrances in Bath and Body Works do except in perfume form and in just one of the most adorable bottles. I mean, this is stinking cute. A fragrance that makes me especially happy because there's something about the curvature of the bottle and the fact that this fragrance has gotten deeper and stronger and better and creamier and sweeter as it has sat on my shelf. I am slightly mesmerized by it and it is Platino 
from Omnia Profumi. I just love the heft of these bottles. It's super heavy in hand. The fragrance is coconut and vanilla and a little bit of, I think it's almond in the fragrance and a sweetness, like a sticky sweetness from caramel. I mean, this is just so good. It's just teetering on being a gourmand without going into foodie territory. Like this doesn't smell, you know, horribly edible to me. For those of you that don't want to smell like food, I don't think it smells like food. I think it smells like creamy, coconut, nuttiness, vanilla, that's nice little caramel in the background. Like it's a, a an accent note, if you will, rather than the main player. Freaking good. Very happy smell. Very reminiscent of moving from spring into summertime when things warm up and you have a creamy fragrance on your skin that all of a sudden dances when the sun starts to hit it. Something like that. Although I think this is great for wintertime also. And I can't tell you why, but the name brings me joy platino anyway so when i come by and sniff this fragrance and get a whiff of that delicious sweet creamy coconuttiness i'm like yeah this one is hitting on all cylinders right here i love the vibrant color of the next bottle and i love the unique composition that it is i don't know that i personally have anything else like this right in my collection again i can think of other fragrances that pieces of those fragrances make this up and that's venom incarnate from stefan humbert lucas stefan humbert lucas for us americans <laughs> friends wow this is sexiness in a bottle if you like fruity florals but you want something a little bit different this will give you fruity leather leather with a nice vanilla tonka bean base to it. It's strawberry at the top. This gives you that sort of strawberry accord right at the top and into the mid, a soft leathery background and the creaminess from the vanilla and the tonka bean. Tonka bean can sometimes feel a little tiny bit powdery. There are other fruits here, I think other berries. So good, so good and such a happy little thing. You know, people have problems with the snake motif. I can't help y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what's on the bottle. But I love that it's sitting up in my collection and this little top part looks like a little bit of a strawberry. See, the shape of it, I don't think that's what it's supposed to do because all of the line, the bottles from this line have the same shape of top. But I love the little wraparound that for me evokes a strawberry kind of image. And I love that I know when I put this on, I'm going to smell good and sexy and everyone in my family loves it. Husband thinks it's sexy and the kids just really like the fruitiness of it and the deepness of it, even though they're not aware that they're also smelling like this very nice, feminine, easygoing leather here. Really beautiful fragrance. I love to sniff this next fragrance for several reasons. One, it does remind me that there is such a thing as luxury in perfume. And I like all kinds of perfumes. I preach about that in video. So please don't take this as a snobby statement, but there are some luxurious types of perfumes that are maybe worth the splurge. And this line I think is, it is the more sort of premier line from Guerlain. This is a little bottle of Gourmand Cocon. And I know that there is Fev Gourmand that was recently released that replaces this. And is this a little bit maybe amped up in terms of the longevity. Let me know if you've tried that and if that's your experience with it. And so the reminder is that those are out there to try that entire line. I have Angelique Noir from the line and I don't think that I've, have I purchased any others of that particular line, but I've got my eye on all of them. I enjoy sniffing them. The few times I've been in store. So like last summer we were in Vegas and that was the last time that I was able to sniff them in the Bellagio Berlin shop. Of course, you've got the, the sales associates, you know, sticking blotters all in your face the entire time and people reaching over you. And it's just not that great of a shopping experience. This is such a delicious, delicious like Tootsie Roll. It's like a Tootsie Roll melted in your mouth and then perfumed on top. This is what this is. This is like the most elegant chocolate fragrance. And what I also like about this is that it's like the last man standing. I went through this phase where I wanted lots of gourmand fragrances and I went through a chocolate phase. So I had probably, I don't know, 15 or so <laughs> chocolate fragrances, many of which I have passed along or sold off. I probably have maybe four or five or so left. And this one is the best among them and the last man standing, if you will. It reminds me of that show. So all of that to say that this is one of the best, if not the best chocolate fragrance that I've ever tried. And so I like it from that perspective that it's the standout and that it represents that it's okay to spend on luxury for the things that you really, really want if they're worth it, if they're worth it. And that's only up to you to decide. The next fragrance makes me happy because it is like a supreme symbol of femininity to me. 
for me, when I look at this, there's something about the bottle color, the darkness of it, the mysterious aspect of the way that the light shines through it and the way that it smells that just screams uh, womanly femininity, you know, all of your being in your like wiles, your feminine wiles type of thing. And so look, people were really judgy about this fragrance when it first came out because it felt like false advertising to people. This is black opium over red. So let's take a second to just appreciate the way that the light shines through this sort of dark reddish, it's almost like a brown red bottle here. And it smells a lot like black opium, the original. It does have some cherry in it. But the deception here is that people, well, deception is a strong word, but people felt like they were going to get a full on cherry fragrance. There's cherry in the opening and maybe slightly into the mid and then the cherry sort of takes a back seat or dies down. And then this becomes the original black opium, maybe with the coffee amped up a little bit. I still think this is beautiful. This is like, for me, the other thing is it has gotten deeper as it has sat on my shelf. It's like a combination of the original black opium with the Le Parfum version, which by far is one of my favorite vanilla releases of recent years. The deepness of the Le Parfum vanilla focused one with sprinkles of this very like sweet cherry liqueur accord. Oh my God, this is so, so good. Deep vanilla. And so part of the surprise for me is that when I mentioned this in the video that I hauled this, I said that this is a vanilla fragrance, not a cherry fragrance. I said that, but that doesn't mean that this isn't a fabulous fragrance. I still like this and think it is wonderful. And it really feels highly feminine, very sort of cozy and comforting, as well as being sultry, very sultry fragrance. This is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's everything that I wanted the original black opium to be and more. And wearing this by itself or layering it with a parfum version or layering it with a cherry fragrance, if you would like, any of those things could work out. But on its own, it is beautiful and very pretty to look at. I enjoy coming by the shelf and just looking at this and sniffing it really good. The last fragrance, and maybe it's an honorable mention because people never talk about this fragrance. Like literally no one I know talks about this fragrance. I don't think I've seen this mentioned on any channel that I have watched since I've been watching Fragrance YouTube. And y'all, when I tell y'all I have watched thousands of videos at this point, <laughs> no one has talked about Escape from Calvin Klein. This reminds me of being young, footloose, fancy free, running the streets of the Bronx with my friends in the summertime, stopping at the, do I have lipstick? Have I had lipstick on my teeth the whole time? Or is that just the way the shadow's hitting? We're going to act like we didn't see that. Let's keep going. Y'all should tell me if I have lipstick on my teeth, aren't we friends? <laughs> It reminds me of running the streets with my friends and thinking that we owned the world. We were young and wild and free. <sighs> Have you tried this? It's supposed to be like beachy, but I don't know. It's one of those fragrances that I can't describe. It has the entire kitchen sink in it. A lot of florals, maybe some fruity notes, a little bit of sweetness, maybe some amber, maybe some woodiness. Maybe it has oak moss. It's got everything. I don't even know how to describe this, but looking at the bottle and thinking about my youth <laughs> wearing the heck out of this fragrance and it was strong back in the day i mean this one was like they could smell you several blocks away if i was in the bronx they probably smelled me out in brooklyn <laughs> wearing this fragrance and a lot of people wore it and it was inexpensive was it inexpensive or am i making that up do i have a romantic memory of it being inexpensive and it really wasn't but right now you can get this for under 20 dollars, probably on fragrance net I will link all of these fragrances below in case you're interested in trying them out. Man, what a memory this brings for me. I've got it hidden up on my top shelf of my fragrance shelves, and that's the shelf upon which I have, or is it on which I have? This isn't a grammar lesson. Stop it, Veronica. It's the shelf that has all of the strange and bizarre fragrances that I don't know how to classify because they sort of stand on their own. They're unique. And this is sitting in the corner. So I don't always like see it, but when I look up there, with my little short leg itself, I got to climb on my stool and look on the top shelf and it's over in the corner. And I'm like, hey, old friend, remember when we were young teenagers and just the world was our oyster? We'll always be friends. So Escape by Calvin Klein makes me super happy just to look at, even though I wear it on very rare occasions. What fragrances make you happy? Where you go by your shelf, you look at it, you have a connection with it and you immediately feel joy in your heart for some reason, one reason or another. Tell us, tell us in the comments. 
We love to share. I love hearing from y'all. You love hearing from each other and all of those things. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for hanging out with me.